Hola, welcome. This is Dino Delano. And as you can see right up there, it says where your attention goes, your energy flows. So what we're getting into today is how to direct your life energy, how to get in touch with that energy, how to literally not only realize that you have an energy body or an aura, however we want to say it, but also so that how you can actually contact it, feel it, and in the process, direct that energy toward healing or whatever that you wish to accomplish. But mostly we're, fun, we're focusing on healing today. And I'm going to get into some what, for some of you at least, will seem like some very radical ideas about the healing process. Now, I also want to be very clear that I don't teach people and I don't share with you anything that I have not done myself, all right? Uh, because unless, you know, unless you've actually gone through the process, you have really very little idea of whether you have something, you know, that's really workable. And I really believe in not just giving people information and some good ideas and so on, which we certainly do, but also to give you the actual practical methods and techniques to bring it about. All right? Okay. Becoming the director in your life. Becoming the director means that you do. You become just like, you know, the director of a film or the director of a play. But literally, you become the director in your own life. You learn to direct the energies of your life. And I'm not talking about control. Control and direction is a very different thing. We have a huge amount of modalities anymore that uh, work at a healing process. EFT, uh, which is one I really love. I think it's a great technique. Uh, it's elegant in the sense that it works very simply and oftentimes works very easily. And, that, and I love what it means, EFT, emotional freedom technique. In other words, it frees up the emotional body, okay, because you have several bodies. Think of yourself as a layer cake in that sense. Okay, and if you were to cut a layer, you know, cut into a piece of layer cake, you see all of these different layers of chocolate and cream and cake and... Um, frosting and pudding away, you know, whatever. It's a layer cake, okay? We are a layer cake. You have an emotional body. You have an energetic body. Some call it the aura. I would call it the spirit, okay? That living energetic spirit. Uh, we have a physical body and so on. So we have a various amount of bodies that we work with as human beings. It's a whole structure and yet it has many layers and many functions to it. Uh, you have the laying on of hands, spiritual healing, breath. Qigong breath is another great method to bring about healing. All right? Okay. Becoming the director, being the director in that sense. So let's get more into that. So let's first of all touch on these different bodies that I just talked about. The physical body, right? We're, more, we're very familiar with that when most of us are very identified with that one. Nothing wrong with that. In fact, the more that you can feel your physical body, the more in touch with your physical body that we are, the more we can experience these other bodies. Because again, because they're all interlaced, all interconnected, that means the ability to feel one in depth also gives us the ability to feel the others in depth. We have a mental body, all right? Our mind, our thoughts, our beliefs, our desires, our wishes, our imaginations in that sense, okay? An emotional body. Emotional body is a wonderful um, pro process of and a part of who we are because our beliefs and our ideas and our motivations move that emotional body and break that word down, E-motion. It puts energy in motion. You have a spiritual body, spiritual in the sense that we don't see it. We can't, we don't, you know, at, at this level, it's not a visual. We can take 
images of the aura as an example of that energetic field, so on. But basically, you know, it's not something that we see, but we can feel it. We can feel the spiritual. We can sense the spiritual. We can emote the spiritual. We can intuit the spiritual. When we use these levels of healing, realize that if you heal something, and I, when I want to talk about healing in a, in a very special way here, unfortunately the medical profession, certainly not all people in medicine, because there's a lot of people out there now in medicine that have been through a lot of these understandings that promote a lot of this kind of understanding of holistic healing and so on. But in general, the medical profession treats the what? The physical. That's what pharmaceuticals treat, the physical. They are treating, in that sense, um, incredibly superficial. Okay? It's a superficial way of healing. Oftentimes, what they try to heal with, with uh, pharmaceuticals comes back again. And then they double you know, the dosage, or they give another pharmaceutical, and another, and another, and another, and another, and another. Uh, my son died of AIDS. And... Uh, when I went into his house while he was in the hospital in, in the process of dying, I mean, I discovered that there must have been 50, 40, 30, 30 would be minimizing different drugs that he was on. Uh, there was really nothing much left to him because they had literally, in that sense, destroyed his physical connection through all of these chemicals that he was taking. And I'm not blaming the medical profession. He actually put himself into it himself. So I'm not, there's, that, that's not what I'm getting at. What I'm getting at is that just healing at a physical level in these ways, in the ways that we've just touched on, is incredibly superficial. Then we have the mental body, mind, thought, we have finally come into an understanding, a paradigm shift, so to speak, in the last 20, 30 years more so, that yes, our thoughts, our mental images, literally have an effect on our life, all right? And they have an effect because they what? They move the emotional body. They move the emotions, thoughts of, love and caring and feeling and sexuality and uh, all of this and the sense of nature and the beauty of it bring what? Wonderful feelings and emote wonderful feelings and what gets affected? The physical body gets affected, doesn't it? Yes, it does. The spiritual body, that energy. When we allow ourselves and when we bring ourselves to an awareness Okay, an awareness of the spiritual, and we begin to literally feel the spiritual. In other words, it's no longer abstract. It no longer belongs to the church. Okay, it no longer belongs to the clergy, right? When we understand that spiritual is all that part of all that is, that energetic process is all that is, now we begin to acknowledge our intuition and our spontaneity, and that becomes part of the integration with the whole of life, the completeness of life, the cosmos, the universe, cosmic consciousness, whatever you want to call it. Cosmic consciousness really is a very simple thing. It's not this wah-woo stuff that is so promulgated by sometimes religions, gurus, or whatever, it's very simply that one is aware that I am a part of the cosmos. I am cosmic conscious. That's it, all right? No big deal. The last one on there that I have is says change. What I'm getting at is that real healing not only takes in all of these levels, but it also brings about a change. So if you have are having a difficulty in a particular area, whether it be with money, or it be with a physical body, or your emotions, or your mental process, whatever it is, realize that real healing means that a change is going to come about. And if you don't allow yourself to move a go with that change, right, 
Oftentimes, we end up reverting back to right where we were physically. In other words, we regain, we recreate that same physical problem. That, again, is the problem with dealing uh, uh, with healing through just pharmaceuticals and various things of that nature. They are incredibly superficial. All right, let's move on. And I said I'm going to, we're going to get into some radical ideas of a way to bring about healing. I want to talk about awareness. What is awareness? Well, let's imagine that um, every day when you go to work, right, let's say you walk down the same street to get to your office or wherever it is that you have your, your business, whatever. But anyway, you're walking down the sidewalk, <clears throat> you trip. Not completely, you don't fall down, but, you know, of, you're thrown off balance, but you look down and you realize a piece of the sidewalk maybe has come up. Uh, part of it is sunk down, a piece has come up, and you trip on it. No, well, okay, you move on, go to work. Next day you're walking down, oh, you do it again. Third day, maybe sometimes it takes four, sometimes it takes five, depends. And, oh, you walk around it. In other words, your awareness has brought you to the point of where you walk around the problem. You no longer allow it to, what, trip you up. Now, some people, for instance, go through their lives in the sense of continually repeating the same thing over and over and over again. I think we all maybe have areas of our life where we have done that. And, of course, we keep creating the same problem because we have not allowed ourselves to what? Become aware of how we're creating it, how we're bringing it about. This has got nothing to do with guilt, by the way. It's, not what it, it's bringing awareness to that point. And I've told this story before in one of the other videos, but I think it's, it's valuable here also. When Darwin sailed around the tip of South America, and they stopped at Tierra del Fuego, they discovered something rather interesting. The islanders there, the people, could not see his sailing vessels. The shaman could, eh? but not the average, quote, person out there. Right? But he put them in their little boats and brought them out and had them touch the vessel, and a while, woo, they could see it. Because in their minds, in their concept, in their belief structure, however we want to word that, they did not have the construct or the ability to be able to perceive those sailing vessels. But once touched, now they could see it. So in other words, they became what? Aware of that. In our society, we often continually beat on our finger and at the same time try, try to create pharmaceuticals and methods of healing to solve the problem while we're still beating on the finger. It's like we're throwing all of this stuff into the environment, you know, pesticides and so forth, that create all of these problems, and at the same time we're working on all of these methods to heal it. Rather ridiculous, isn't it? Huh? In other words, we have not become aware or will not allow ourselves to become aware of how we are creating the problem. There's many reasons for that, right? Uh, a very simplistic one is, is that if I went into a dentist office and I told the dentist, okay, here is this liquid. If you give it to all your patients, they will never have another cavity. He's not probably going to be very excited because his what? Income is based on the continuance of cavities. It's not something obvious we need to worry about. As long as we have processed food, we're going to have plenty of that. But that's not the point. The process, the point is, is that people will not allow themselves oftentimes, and we all do this, by the way, to varying degrees, to become aware of where there is a problem, of how we are creating a problem, because it threatens another part of our life. And particularly if it threatens the what? The income level. In other words, I don't really want to see that the business that I am in 
is creating problems like burning coal as an example and all of these things. Another one that's come up recently called fracking, you know, and putting all of these uh, deadly chemicals into the earth and at the same time claiming that it's all safe and it's really all all right. Yes, sure, okay, yeah. I'm selling you the Brooklyn Bridge, okay? Anyway, you get the point. In other words, we're not going to allow that awareness to take hold and to see the truth of things because it threatens something else. So that's what I mean that real healing, a depth of healing, is also going to bring you to a point of where you will have to shift and make a change in the actual actions and the things that you do in life. So I want you to really be aware of that, okay, as we get into this. All right, how? In other words, how do we, how do we bring about this depth of healing? Direct feelings and imagination, right? How do we direct feelings? Let's imagine, let's create a problem. Let me tell you a story first. Several years ago, and some of you may have heard this story before, but I'll tell it now in, in maybe in a different way. I got arthritis in my left foot. Right? In the process, what I did is I began to direct my feelings into that foot. Feelings, what meaning is that the foot was hurting, the foot was swollen. I was literally growing a bunion along, you know, right, right, you know, where the big, to, right where the big toe is. So on. I was on crutches oftentimes. I was in pain, right? Now, I did not want to have arthritis, but I knew because of the, all the work that I've done over the years and being involved in the human potential movement for well over 40 years now, uh, and having worked with hypnosis and a huge amount of different modalities, I knew that there was some reason that I was creating this problem. Now, on a mental level, one of the reasons I was creating this problem is that I was afraid to step out into the world. I grew up in an atmosphere as a child uh, that was very brutal in many ways. I was kidnapped also as a child. I also had a mother that was a little... Tweaky, let's put it that way, without getting into a lot of detail. She's a little crazy, right? Uh, would leave me in the crib all day long, 10, 12 hours a day, without food, all by myself, laying in my shit, and so on. This beginning of life, for me, created a lot of emotional difficulties and problems. But it also created a lot of fear about stepping out into the world. To me, the world in, at a subjective feeling emotional level, those emotional bodies, so that feeling body, was what? Dangerous, right? So I would oftentimes hold myself back from doing or moving out in the things that I needed to do. So my body began to what? Freeze up in that area. Freeze up, fear, etc. turned into what? On a physical level called authenticity. Arthritis. How did I heal it? The way that I healed it was as I began to direct my feelings into that foot. Now I'm going to use my hand, right, because you can see it. A little difficulty for me to get my foot up here. So you get the idea of what I'm getting at when I say direct my feelings. Sometimes I would literally take this hand, and if you imagine that this is my foot, and I would say feel my feet. Feel my touch, feel my touch, and I'd be tapping on the foot. Feel my touch, feel my hand, feel my touch, feel my touch. What I was doing by doing that was what? Bringing my awareness, bringing my attention into that foot. I wanted to bring attention to the difficulty. I wanted to bring attention to the feelings. I wanted to bring attention to the pain. In other words, I didn't want to escape it because I knew that awareness could bring a what? Healing. That's right. Because when we open up our awareness, whether it be in the area of money, whether it be in the area of uh, relationships, whether it be in the area of communication, when we open up awareness, we can now begin to perceive, we can see the problem. We can see that we're stepping on the same crack, right? And we're tripping over the same problem every day. 
Once we see that, now we have a choice as to what? Walk around it. Now, strangely enough, many times, even when people see the problem, they will not make a change. They're afraid or, or whatever. But anyway, now we can walk around it. So I'm bringing awareness by doing that. The next thing that I'm doing in the process of bringing healing to the foot, I'm imagining myself walking perfectly. Even though I was on crutches sometimes, even though I was sometimes in a lot of pain, I would still imagine myself walking perfectly. I would feel myself. Feeling, I think, is more important than imagination, by the way. I would feel that process happening, all right? I would feel it coming about, and so on. Then also, one of the major things that I did is that I would see the end results, okay? okay? Methods help us direct feeling and imagination. I want to bring this about by what, because it's right there in front of us, right? What a method, realize that what a method is, just like I'm teaching you right here, this is a method. This is a way to direct your healing process. Understand, though, the method is not magic by any degree of the imagination. Uh, some modalities are better than others, there's no doubt about that, like I think EFT is a great modality. But it is not the magic. The magic is within you. You are the healer. The healer springs forth from within. We're all familiar, I think, with the term brainwashing, right? They brainwash a person, might take months, might take a year, whatever. They did this, you know, during the Second World War and various things that they played with in the military and right, brainwashing. Okay? We know that brainwashing can take happen. Yeah? If we can brainwash a person into a particular belief, into a particular fear, into a particular idea, can we then also, in that sense, brainwash ourselves into healing? And the answer to that is definitely yes. But I don't mean brainwashing in the sense of the common idea of it, but what brainwashing in the sense that we continually focus, focus on the healing, we imagine the healing, we see the healing, and no matter, even though maybe we're having doubt, maybe we're having fears that it isn't going to happen, we continue the process. Because we continue the process, eventually, and my eventuality with the foot took three months. Now, this is just as important in describing to you what took place. During that time, I felt immense at times, sometimes it would last for hours, not days necessarily, but hours, immense depression. Sometimes I would feel intensity of uh, uh, worthlessness, intensity of uh, deprivation, in, and so on. All of these emotions had been buried in my, what, feet. These were emotions that I experienced as a baby. This sense of helplessness, this sense of uh, desperation, this sense of death. The in, in, of feelings that I was going to die, and so on. In fact, the, case, the truth is, is that I was kidnapped from my mother by my grandparents because they knew that if I continued with her, I probably would die. They kidnapped me and hid me out for several years. But that's another story. So we understand then that our bodies, what, hold not only the mental pictures of experience, but also the emotional. Those emotions I had never gotten really in touch with. And because I had not gotten in touch with them, they, to varying degrees, controlled my what? Actions. They, to varying degrees, stopped me from moving out into reality in the way that I wanted to. They, in some ways, were holding me back from making the changes that I needed to bring about in my life in order to be more whole in that sense, to be more complete, to more create what, what I needed in my, what, quote, spiritual expression of life. 
So understand again that the depth of healing is important that we heal ourselves fully, not just on a superficial level. Now, strangely enough, about six, eight months later, I begin to get the same problem in my right foot. And I won't go through the details, but I also heal that too. By the way, the bunion disappeared. So, when you have a problem, let's say a physical problem or a mental problem, you can do the tapping on the hands, so to speak, or on the foot or on the problem. In other words, you begin to focus on the problem. Feel my fingers. Feel my hand. In other words, you begin to focus with intention. This is not an easy process. I want to I wanna share that with you. I want you to understand that. <coughs> if you're looking for a quick pill fix, shut this video off. Okay? Get away from it. Go do something else. If you're looking for a quick method that's going to happen overnight and so on, forget it. Right? This is not for you. And I'm not saying you're right or wrong about it. I'm just saying it's not for you. Because this is a process that takes time where we literally heal the depth of what's going on. We not only heal the physical, we heal the emotional, we heal the mental, and we heal, in that sense, the spiritual. Now, as you begin to work on a physical problem, and you start feeling, you know, the hand, the foot, the shoulder, the knee, whatever it is, when you start feeling it, really focus on that feeling. The first day, focus for 10, 15 minutes. And then move the focus to where you're using your feeling and imagination and see and feel that part of your body, what? Working perfectly. See it working as it should. Mainly, feel it working as it should. Because I'm also going to ask you to bring into something into this, which is very important, which is music. And we'll get into that in a moment. Now, I want to touch on this first. When you do self-healing, it will build confidence and trust in life. The medical profession, unfortunately, again, I'm generalizing. Again, not all medical people. There's some great medical people out there. But in, in a general sense, have taught us to distrust in the life process. We don't trust that our bodies will naturally heal. And because we don't trust that the body will naturally heal, oftentimes we literally get in the way of that healing process. But when you, as an individual, put your attention and your feelings and your emotion and your desire and your imagination into that process and you begin to get some positive results, wow, you begin to what? Trust. You literally begin to trust in life. You begin to understand that at the basis of life is good. That the basis of life is love that the basis of life is all of these wonderful, beautiful ideas that we often have, but oftentimes cannot get in touch with because we have lost our sense of trust. So healing builds trust in that process. Learning to trust your intuition and your spontaneity. Because a lot of times when you get into the process of focusing into an arthritic problem or a cancer problem or whatever it is, an intuition will come up or a, a feeling to drink maybe tons of orange juice. And I did that. I can remember one time drinking orange juice for a whole month or longer. And I was drinking a quart a day. It was ridiculous. And I didn't even really like orange juice all that much. But something was telling me to do that, and I followed that intuitive process. So trust not only helps you develop a trust in life, it helps you to develop a trust in your intuition. Okay? You begin to trust more within you than the information that sometimes we necessarily get out here from the medical profession, the people in business, the money, or whatever it is. We begin to understand that there is a natural, instinctual, if you want to call it that, 
intuitive, intelligent response that is tied into life that continually feeds us information and helps us move down the road in the way that we need to. Okay, the work. Now, as I said a little bit earlier, if you don't want to do the work, if this is too much work, and it is work, <coughs> shut this video off, all right? We won't harbor on that anymore. Imagination and movement. I'm big into movement as an integration process. Think of it this way. For instance, uh, winter, when we look at nature, the, the, the rivers and the uh, creeks and so on, a lot of times jam up with logs and rocks and uh, debris and so forth. But when springtime comes, what happens is in the snow melt, it washes all of that debris away. That's what movement does in your body. In other words, when you go walk every day, or you do Tai Chi, or you do yoga, or whatever, it literally is like bringing springtime to your body. It moves the debris through, but it also does something else. When you're in the process of changing attitude, changing beliefs, changing ideas, healing an arthritic problem, whatever it is, it also helps you integrate those changes. Because in movement, you're moving your whole body. You're integrating. You're bringing it all through you. A mind, body, emotion, feeling, uh, energetic, and so on. All right? Well, this is, I consider, one of the major things to use in the healing process is music. Now, there's a lot of music that's sold out there, and I've done some of it myself with people. I did some stuff with Stephen Halpern many, many, many years ago in, in a tape that, uh, that we made together. I did the words and uh, the, that part of the structure of it, the, the scripting, and uh, Stephen did the music and so forth. So we know that music is very powerful. Think about when you go to a movie, right? One of the major things that they use in a film in order to move you and motivate you is what? Music, right? To scare you, we have a certain kind of music to bring you into that feeling because now you got the dialogue, you got the scene, you got the visual, but the music really drives your what? Emotions and feelings, all right? Same is true in the healing process. What's the best music to use? The one that moves you. <laughs> okay, I don't know what that is. You do, right? For instance, during the time that I was bringing healing to my feet, right, I used uh, the album, an album from uh, the group Heart, right, because it had that dance and that feeling and that movement, kind of like um, uh, jazzercise. I remember when the, that was big in the country and so on. And I would feel myself moving, and I would imagine myself moving, and I'd see myself dancing and moving and so on. So you see, when I talk about healing, I'm not talking about something that's superficial. I'm talking about you bringing the whole of you into it, the completeness of you into it. Because if you continually feel that hand or that foot or whatever it is, pretty soon over a period of days, you'll also begin to feel tingling in that area of your body. The tingling that you feel is the energetic field of life. You become also aware of your spiritual body in that sense. As you become aware of your spiritual body, you become more aware of where there is blockages. When you become aware of blockages, you can focus on the blockage. You can put energy into that blockage. You can imagine that blockage disappearing and the energy flowing freely. For instance, again, with the healing of the foot, I would imagine a golden ball surrounding that foot. I would feel the energy pulsing, and I can literally feel stuff like that. But I've been working on it for a while. I've been doing it for a while. It didn't happen overnight. This is like learning to play an instrument. But what you're learning to play is your 
human body. You're learning this instrument that you are living in. Wow, imagine that. <laughs> I'm being a little sarcastic because most of what we are taught in our society is to push away the feelings, push away the emotions, push away the anger, push away this, push away the sexual feelings, and so on. We get all of these beliefs and attitudes that we have literally cause us, okay? Not figurative, not, not imaginatively, all right? But literally cause us to be out of touch with the human body. Now, if you're out of touch with the body, does that mean we get in the way of the healing? You bet your ass, <laughs> okay, to put it bluntly. So the more in touch with your body that you can become, the better your ability to bring about awareness and healing. The same is true with money, by the way. All right? If you're having difficulties with money or difficulties in relationships, if you will continually focus on it without a lot of judgment, but become aware of your actions, become aware of what you're doing, become aware of that crack in the sidewalk, right? You can begin to move around it, and you will bring about a healing through awareness. It really all has to do at some level with awareness, waking up, in other words. The same thing is true in our environment, isn't it? That we're literally polluting it, that again, most of the problems that we have, we are literally creating. Again, we're banging on our finger and at the same time trying to create all of these other things and chemicals and so on to solve the problem. Okay? Lack of awareness, okay? ignorance on our part. So let's move out of the ignorance and let's move into a state of holistic healing. All right. So let's just go over it real quick. Focus awareness in the problem area, right? That's number one. You, want, you don't want to escape from it. You want to focus into it. If I were having a, an, a problem with money, I'd start writing down on a piece of paper possibly. You know, what is the problem with money? Why am I having difficulties with money? And then I would begin to pay attention to my actions in life. What am I literally doing? What are the things that I'm doing to create this problem? Because it doesn't happen by itself. Number two, see and feel the energy working. Again, if it were a money thing, now I begin to see and feel and imagine abundance. In the sense of feeling and imagining abundance, I might begin to realize that I have a fear of loss of money. Or I might have a thing, uh, an idea that money is evil, and money is wrong, and money is bad, and so on. Right? So you get in touch, and you see that belief, you begin to turn it around. You begin to do some work, you transform that belief, in the sense, again, through your imagination. Now begin to feel the energy in around the area. If it's money, you imagine that energetic field of money feeding people. You imagine it giving people education. You imagine it bringing harmony to your own household. You imagine it taking you on vacation, and so on. Then add music to the movement. So this, and it, let me give you a sense of time. When I'm working on something that I'm trying to, working, not trying to heal, but I am healing, right? That I'm bringing about a positive change, I'm going to spend... 15 minutes to a half an hour on it twice a day, okay? That's what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it in that sense religiously. All right. Now, a last thing before we move on here, because the last thing that you want to do, okay, is see and feel the end results. The end results for me with the feet was what? Now, seeing and imagining and feeling myself walking perfectly, all right? If the end result is a bag full of money, then it's a bag full of money. Or you look at your bank account in your imagination and you see 100000 in there, or 50000 whatever, all right? Okay? So, again, to see the end results. End results begins to bring it, give you the sense that it has already happened. And at that level, at a spiritual level, at a mental level, it's already there. 
you simply will end up walking into the process. When you see a foot or a hand or a body or a tumor healed, it is simply a matter of time till you walk into the presence of that body that is already in existence on a spiritual level. And sure enough, the healing happens. I mean, over the years of thousands of people that I did workshops with, I watched people heal themselves of cancer and arthritis and muscular dystrophy and on and on and on and on and on. But if you don't do the work, you'll never experience the results. Now let me touch on one other thing before we end this, all right? Real quick here. And this is important. Don't teach the same things that are creating the problem. Understand that most of the religious teachings are the problem, okay? One of the major problems that we have in life. Because when you teach people fear, you also teach them anger. And when you teach them anger, you also teach them that kind of rebellion that wants to go out and kill and murder and steal and get retribution in that form. Do not teach fear. In other words, you know, if you're a bad boy, you're going to go to hell. You know, that kind of stuff. Don't teach shame. Don't teach people, don't teach your children that nudity is wrong, that nudity is bad. You can simply say, that's how people believe. But we understand that nudity is good. Nudity is natural. It's a natural process. And if you have personal problems with that yourself, begin to take a look at those beliefs and why you feel that way. Okay, begin to look at the beliefs that are literally in your life dysfunctional and begin to turn them around. Because we can not only want to heal ourselves, we also want to stop teaching the stuff that created the problem to begin with. All right, I have a great book for you, by the way. If you go to coolzenhealing.com, uh, right? coolzenhealing.com, and click on the book, Discover the Magic in You, it will give you an enormous amount of methods and processes in order to do the things that I have just talked about. And it will reinforce what, we, what, what we've gotten into here. If you really are serious about bringing changes in your life, you will do the work. All right, thanks for being with me, Dino Delano. It's certainly been a pleasure. The world belongs to the imaginative. Think about that for a moment, okay, as we're finishing this up, that when you think about Albert Einstein and the theory of relativity, it was through his imagination. Walt Disney, that's blatantly obvious. George Washington Carver, the great botanist, who said he talked to the peanut in his imagination, and he brought about 600 uses for the peanut. Jonas Salk, who developed the uh, serum for polio, if you read his memoirs, it was a lot done through his what? Imagination. The benzene ring, which was brought about by a man by the name of Kukuli, right, was also brought about through imagination. The man who developed the needle for the singer, singer sewing machine, in his, in his dream he saw spears go, moving up and down and there was a hole in the bottom of that spear. That's how the needle was developed for the sewing machine imagination. The world belongs to the imaginative. All right? Go to coolzenhealing.com. Thanks again for being with me. Dino Delano. Take care.